I'm going to talk about applying effects to individual files. If you want to follow along, open up the Singer WAV file by going to the Working Files, Demo Files folder, and finding Singer right there and bringing that in. All right, we apply effects to individual files in what Adobe calls the Waveform Editor. I kind of disagree with that term because the Waveform Editor is not just the waveform. You can also apply effects to individual files inside the Spectral Frequency Display View and the Spectral Pitch Display View. It's just that working inside the Waveform Display View of the Editor Panel is a little more intuitive, so that's where we'll work here. But do be aware that you can apply it to any of those three views. We're not talking about the multi-track session, basically. So there are two different kinds of effects that you can apply inside the Waveform View here. There are effects that have no options and effects that have options. If you go to the Effects menu, you'll see that some effects like Invert and Reverse and Silence have no ellipsis, no dots after them like that. And then they also have no flyout menu next to them. Flyout menu ones say these are groups of effects, and here are those effects within the groups, and each one of those effects has the ellipsis, which means that when you click on them, you're going to open up a dialog box that gives you options. These effects have no options. If I click on Reverse on this file, it'll do that. Boom, it's going to reverse it. No choices, no options, just reverse. I won't do that by pressing Control or Command Z, don't do that. And the same would be true if I were to select all this file, for example, and click on Silence, gone. I mean, it's not going to say how much silence do you want, it's just silent, right? And if I were to click on Invert, same kind of thing would happen, it would just flip the waveform. It would sound the same, but it would just flip the waveform, so that would be a different phase, just in case you have phase issues with two files that you put together in a stereo session. Nevertheless, no options. Here, options with dots. Here, no options. Generate tones is a sort of a unique effect. If you click on that, it generates a tone. And you can apply it either to the whole file, deleting whatever is there, or you can insert it. If you have the current time indicator there and you've not selected the file, it will insert it. If I just click OK, it'll insert three seconds of that tone, which is the amount of time that was selected. You could select any amount of time you want. So the tone and then just there's the music. Or you can cover it up, whatever you want to do. You can replace what's there or not. But the rest of the guys have their own kind of separate thing where you apply an effect onto a clip rather than replace the clip. Now over to the right of the effects menu is something called favorites. And this is full of effects with no ellipsis after them. These effects just happen. You apply them and you're done. And favorites are things that you can make. These were made by the Adobe engineers, and they basically combine effects and properties of effects, or individual effects with certain properties. And when you apply them, those properties or those groups of effects are applied directly to the clip, and you're done. You can't make any changes. So let's say the most obvious one would be telephone voice. Just too hot. Now you may think, yeah, I would like to adjust that a little bit. Well, you can apply effects to create the same kind of effect and then make some adjustments, but here it's done for you. You just take that and you accept it as it is, which may not be a bad thing. It's a pretty cool thing and you can use it very quickly. And on top of that, you can make your own favorites. I talk about making your own favorites in other tutorials. So just be aware, these guys do something right away that you can't adjust. It's just a one-shot deal. So let's go back to effects. There are two different ways that you apply effects to an individual file. You either just do it directly on the waveform here, in which case that's called destructive editing, or you do it down here in the effects rack. Now, if you don't see the effects rack, it's probably one of these four tabs here. You might have that view. Just click on effects rack, and there it is. Or if you don't see it anywhere amongst these tabs, just go to window and click on effects rack to bring it forward. So there's effects rack. When you apply an effect here, it's not destructive. It's kind of layered on top electronically. But eventually, you have to apply it. Otherwise, it won't have any effect, ultimately. If you want to save this file or use this file in a multi-track session with those effects applied, eventually, you have to do what's called apply. And when you apply it, you will destructively change this clip. And by destructively change it, what that means is it changes the nature of that audio and saves this thing as a temporary file in a temporary folder. And then if you save that file without changing the name, that will replace the original file. If you change the name or change the folder location, the hard drive location, then it won't replace the original file. Just be aware. This is the destructive editing side of things when you work with individual files. It's non-destructive when you work on the multi-track session. Okay, let's apply some effects. If I go to effects to apply an effect, I want to just show you generically how to do this. I'll talk about specific effects later. I'll go over here and I notice that some effects have the word process next to them. 
process effects can be applied only directly onto a clip. So notice normalize, fade envelope, and gain envelope. If I go over here to the effects rack, I go to the amplitude and compression, you won't see normalize and the gain and the fade envelopes here. They're not available inside the effects rack. Process effects just are a little different. They're processor intensive and so have to be applied directly to a clip. So let me just go over here and apply an effect. And typically this is how you would do it over here. You go, let's say to reverb. We'll go to, let's say convolution reverb. When you do that, you get a dialog box. A dialog box is the generic term where you've got a thing in which you can make changes, click on stuff, you know, make adjustments. And what you can do inside a dialog box is you can just listen to your clip by pressing the play button here or down here. Click stop there. If you want to loop it, you click the loop button and then click play. It'll just go over and over and over again. Click stop. If you select an area, it'll loop just that area like that. And that's basically how you can preview it. This little button turns it on or off. I'll click away here. As you preview it, it's too hard. You can decide I can turn it on and off or dry and wet and decide whether, you know, what I'm trying out here is working or not. And as you make those decisions, you click apply. Now, you can make all kinds of changes here. There are presets, so I'll just click a preset here, like a standing room only, whatever that means. It's too hard to find, just too and what's cool is, as this is playing, I can try different presets. Too hard to find, just too hard to find, just too hard to find. Okay, these are presets, and then inside the convolution reverb, which is a special kind of effect, which I'll talk about later, they're what are called impulses. So you select the preset, then you can try an impulse as well. Just too hard to find. Just too hard to find. Just too hard to find. Things like that. And then as you're playing it as well, let's say I go back to the default. And I'll pick, let's say, the classroom, which is kind of a default as well. And as I play this, I can, I can change this. Just too hard to find. 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 So you can make adjustments here and listen to how things are being applied. So this is what's really cool about working with the effects here, that you can real-time preview as you are applying changes to the effect. And when you're happy, when you're done, when you finally found something that you like, you click on apply. Or if you don't like it, you click close. But you click on apply, and that'll apply it to the entire clip. I'm going to undo that. If I decide that I want to apply it only to part of the clip, let's say that one, I open up that effect again, go back to a reverb, go to convolution reverb. It ends up where we were before. If I click apply, it applies only to that section. So you can apply it to the entire clip or just to a selection like that. So this part will have it and this part won't. Just too high. So you can see there's a big difference there in terms of the volume and also the effect. I want to do that. Okay, so that's how you apply an effect directly. How you apply an effect in the effects rack, first of all, just consider that the effects rack always has some custom presets. These presets, you know, combine effects. So if I were to, let's say, go to on the telephone, very much like that preset we listened to before, it's three effects. Here, let's see what it sounds like. Just too hard to find. Which sounds an awful lot like this guy that we got under the favorites here, the telephone voice. If I were to apply that, and turn this guy off. I can click this button down here to turn off the effects rack. Just to so you can see how the engineers created that favorite. They put these three guys together, made some adjustments to the properties, and ended up with that favorite, and then saved it as a favorite. So let me just turn this guy back on and undo that application of the favorite here. Go back and look at these. There's three different effects that have been applied, and if you want to, let's say, adjust that, you could just double click on one of these. It'll open up the dialog box, and you could make some adjustments to this effect, so I will just play it again. Just too hard to find. Just too hard to find. Just too hard to find. Something like that. So you can make adjustments, and when I click the X, it doesn't like get rid of it, it just closes this down. And those adjustments are still here. If I were to open them up again, there are those adjustments. It took my changes and kept them. So you can take the preset and make adjustments to it if you care to do that way. I'm going to get rid of each of these things. I'll select one at a time and press delete, delete, delete. 
Now, if I clicked on this garbage can up here, it would have been trying to delete the preset as opposed to deleting the individual effect there. So just be aware when you do that. You want to drop the effect from the list here, you press delete. If I undo that, if you want to try the effects but not delete them, but you don't want to hear them, I'm going to play this. And then turn off distortion, see the difference. Define just to so you can see that what difference this makes. I'll try this define guy. just to define. You can always kind of preview things over here as well. You can go, do I want to include this effect or not include this effect? You can try out various options. And when you're finally done, when you've added a preset, or let's say I'm going to back up, I'll just delete these guys for a second, I'll show you one other thing before I continue. But let's say I add the reverb effect here, for example. Go back to the convolution reverb, which we had before. I'm going to change this to, let's say, under the bridge. Let's see what that sounds like. And just too hot. Okay, there it is. Let's say you're happy with that. To have this thing actually show up with the effect applied inside a multi-track session, you have to apply it. Or if you want to, you know, apply this effect and then save this file so that you can play it on the internet or put it on a CD, something like that, again, you have to apply it. Otherwise, it just resides here inside Audition. You won't hear it anywhere else outside Audition. So you notice when you add an effect in the effects rack, it puts an asterisk next to the name of the file. Now, normally an asterisk means that you have created a temporary file tucked away inside a temporary folder. But in this case, when you apply an effect to the effects rack, you haven't actually created a new file. I've kind of talked to Adobe and suggested that they probably shouldn't have that asterisk there unless you actually change the file. Because right now, if I go save, I'm going to get a message. It's going to say, the effects in the rack are not going to be applied to your save file, by the way. Nothing's going to be done. Nothing's changed, really. So even if you save it, it won't be a changed file. You actually have to apply the effects for the effects to take place. So I'll cancel out of that. So normally when you have an asterisk there, it means that the file has been changed and put in a temporary location. In this case, it just means, okay, this guy is sitting here. It's kind of a prompt to, you know, when you save it, you know, you really need to apply this thing first. So now if I apply it, now it's as if I had taken the effect from here and put it on directly. And now the asterisk really has more meaning. If I just press save now, control S or command S and just save this guy, it's going to replace the original file that I've given you on the DVD. So I got to be careful now. If I'm going to save this, I need to go file, save as, and I can save it as the same name, but I got to make sure I don't put it back in the same place that I got it. I will replace the original file. So I would either save it as that name and put it in a different folder, or I change the name and put it in this folder. So in the case of, you know, working on this tutorial, I would suggest that you need to go to wherever you put that special folder I asked you to make called My Audition Exercise Files, and then save it inside there. And I would call it like Singer Edited or something like that, just to make sure we're you know on the same page that we don't destroy the files that were given to you. And of course, your backup is always to take it off the DVD in case you do destroy it. So now it's saved as this, and if I play it now, just too hot. It has the effect added. So finally, if I add an effect, let's say here inside the effects rack, and if I want to apply it just to part of the clip, that is also possible. I can close this down. And when I want to apply it, I can just do this. And the selection only option is active. And when I apply it, it'll apply it to just that section, and not the rest of the clip. So even in the effects rack, you can apply it to part of the clip. But when you do this, if you have seven or eight effects here, all eight of them, or whatever number you have there, will apply only to the selection. You can't selectively decide which ones will be applied. You have to apply all of them in one spot like that. So that is how you apply effects to single files inside Adobe Audition. If you want to apply them to a multi-track session, it's an entirely different process, and I discuss that in another tutorial.